Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to a, another Master Chess web show. Uh, and uh, uh, this time I'm going to be going through my British Championship uh, over the summer. And Andrew will be asking me some pertinent questions, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, go on, fire away, Andrew. Well, this is all part of your uh, new uh, campaign to become, um, um, to reclaim your former glory, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. It's more a sort of experiment. I mean, it, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the big thing is I found myself with uh, more able to travel again and with more time on my hands. So uh, I was wondering what else to do. And I thought, well, I suppose I could play some chess, you know, and I'll probably try and not play too badly. Uh, it hasn't gone incredibly well so far, but um, I, I think I feel that I'm like you know one of these air, you know airplane disasters where the plane is is zooming towards the ground and at the last minute pulls up before it falls under like twenty one fifty. Let's hope so. Let's hope. So. I mean, you've only got to study the games of Keith Arkell and Mark Hedden to know. So there's the blueprint for you. You know, well, to, yeah, to, I, prob I, I probably have to. Do you know, I'm, I'm going to. I'm trying to do things a little bit differently, uh, but certainly my old way of playing, whereby um, I was trying to bamboozle people in the opening and then, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, play for the initiative and stuff like that. I, I, I have to make some adjustments to the way I was playing, uh, uh, you know, some time ago. Uh, but this is a work in progress. But, right, um, so we've got some of your games with the British, yeah. and uh, I think it's going to take us through. Where shall we start? Uh, we can take it from the top, actually. So, so we'll take it from the the Eggleston game now. Uh, so you've got your game against Bellagi up there. I have got my game against Bellagi, and I'm just, I'm just uh... right now. We'll we'll take it from the yeah, we'll take it from the Eggleston game. Because that is the uh, that was, I think that was round round two or round three. So I drew in the first round with Charles H. Story, our mutual friend. Then I I beat Matthew Payne in the second round, uh, and then the 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 third round I played uh, David Eggleston, who. Ended up doing very well, actually. He he got, um, I think he got six and a half points in the end. Good player. Yeah. But, uh, you know, after I beat him, I was like a point ahead. And then he not only overhauled me, but he, you know, he, he zoomed clear. So, uh, okay. Well, let's take it from the top. So I played 1d4. This is, uh, you know, I, I, I have struggled with knowing which openings I should play because, you know, uh, as... I'm sure you are as well, that I'm trying to get a grip on how chess has, has changed since I was uh, last uh, very active as a player. And D4, th I thought was a good idea at the time. And uh, some kind of Queen's Pawn games, basically, mixed in with Catalans, where I've got more experience. So I, I had actually spent some time studying the Catalan. I mean, you've either got to be prepared to play like Magnus Carlsen, who plays absolutely everything and is virtually impossible to prepare for, uh, or, or you've got to find, uh, as you say, the right openings for your style. Catalan suits you down to the ground, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, actually. Yeah, Catalan's very good for me. And, um, you know, the, 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 the issue is which move order you adopt, because there are multiple ways of getting into a Catalan. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, this way around, you castled, didn't you? Yeah, I, mean, I cancelled. Where the black can go here. I've actually had this. No, don't, don't castle. Go here. In a, in a uh, internet. Why can't I move the pieces? I don't know. Are you logged on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, B5. You, oh, B5. Okay. I wondered, uh, is that possible? Well, you can do that. And then white probably plays um, A4, B4, and then C4. Right, I see. And, you know, it, it's... Yeah, you know, it's a game. and I, I mean, I think B5 is well playable. At this stage, White can actually play C4 without going into the sharp lines. That's if the you, main line, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you play C4 here, then there's a lot of sharp lines based on DC, yeah. which 
um, you know, I mean, we're all busy now. Uh, you know, I think as you, you, you know, we, we do accumulate responsibilities and, and whatever. Can't be studying opening theory all the time. And besides, it, it's, you know, I find it incredibly boring to study opening theory. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to particularly get into this, but I don't mind a mainline Catalan, which is more ideas based. And here, black can play uh, knight bd7 or c6, b6. Um, he plays the main line, which I expected. And then I went queen c2, a6, and now a4 rather than capturing on c4. And a4 tends to lead to quite complex middle games where white will normally have a central pawn advantage, but it'll be very difficult to make a lot out of it. Um, yeah. Now, what we get, bishop d7, queen takes c4, bishop c6, and I went bishop g5. Well, this is all pretty well known, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's loads loads of games here. Uh, black goes a5, still well known. Knight c3, knight a6. And, uh, yeah, the, the standard move now is bishop takes f6, it seems. I went rook fd1. And then e4. Um yeah, bishop takes f6 and e4. So you give up the bishops in order to get a central pawn duo and not have black take on f3 at some point, which is, which is possible now already. But then black has to give up the two bishops. Yeah. You know, but white can't open the position very easily. So, you know, it, it's quite a tough struggle. But um, that's probably as good as it's going to get if you uh, don't want to play a lot of theory. If you delay the uh, the actual conflict to the middle game then you know the both players will be on their own resources pretty much so so this line is not is not bad for somebody who doesn't want to study a lot so now he goes rookie eight and he's playing a waiting move he wants me to um uh, this is actually a, a new move as it happens oh. rook c8 has tended to end in draws even a lot of them, then mm -hmm. then I'm probably going to have to take on f6 and play e4. Probably. Well, that looks uh, that looks quite nice for you. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, apparently I can play knight e5 as well. And apparently I can play e3. Uh, so if I take this and play e4, black is a little bit passive, but, you know, he can reposition this bishop with b6 and aim for c5. So... You know, it's uh, still a very uh, complex struggle. Now, when he goes rook e8, that uh, actually produces a position that's not been played before, it seems. It's a strange-looking move, actually. It is a little bit strange. He's trying to play a useful move before I take on f6. And I thought, well, you know, can I play a useful move before I take on f6? And that's where the, the strange Larson-esque h4 comes in. So sometimes what you, you do with, with white, once you've got your pawn centre, you try and open a file on the king side, right, before black, you know, finds a way to get in c5. And then the game can become very complicated because you're advancing pawns in front of your king in order to open up black's king. You've uh, also taken prophylactic out against knight e4, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and h4, you know, it seems to be pretty fashionable. The engines all like playing a random h4, you know. So I, this is my uh, uh, concession to being trendy. <laughs> oh, can, can I? I can't really get it. Can I get away with knight to knight e4? Is that possible? Knight e4. Four. I'm probably taking and taking on c7. Am I? Yeah, I was hoping to get the pawn back, but I can't. Yeah, I have to take on f3. Then, then you take the queen. Yeah. So you know, stop knight e four. I mean, rookie eight was probably planning knight e four. Then he takes on e seven with a rook protecting c seven. You see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, you stop that. Yeah, I mean, I could have taken an f six. You know, but but h four just seemed sort of more interesting. Um, now he goes h six because he he do, he doesn't see useful waiting moves here, and then I really have to take and play e four, implementing my plan. And he rookie eight doesn't look very useful. No, prob probably not. Prophylactic um, 
D5 or something. Yeah, the rook later goes back to F8, actually. Mm. So now he goes Queen D7. So uh, he might want to take that pawn. So I just protect it with B3. Then he goes B6, which looks to play Bishop B7 and, and later C5. So now I go Queen E2. Then his bishop comes back here, and I go Queen E3, which is a sort of creeping move, partly to inhibit C5, but also I'm looking to go G4 and G5 now and open a line on the king side. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting plan. Yeah, it's very, very common in this kind of position. Um, you know, and, and it's why really you want black to play G6, H6. You know, so you, you, you can then try and open a file there. He's really stuck for moves, actually, isn't he? He, he is, rather. And that, that explains why he played bishop d8, which I, I hadn't considered at all. Still looks very passive. Yeah. So now he, he wants to... Well, he, he now plays queen e7. Now, the other point of queen e3 is he can't play g6 to keep the lines closed, because I'm going to... I'm going to take the pawn on h6. Your knight could come to e5 in a minute. Very nasty. Yeah. So he goes there, and I go g5. <clears throat> takes, takes, goes c5. Which, again, um, well, I mean, it makes perfect sense. It, it was a slight surprise after he'd put his bishop on d8. It just looks horrendously risky. I mean, you, you take it, yes? Yeah, I took it. And he took with the queen. And now queen f4, maybe? I did do queen f4, trying to just move my queen over to the king's side and, uh, you know, threaten things like knight d5, knight b5. Looks very, very powerful for you, this position. Probably, probably. But it, you know, I'm not, I'm still not like that convinced. Uh, there was a resource he had somewhere around here. I think he could have played like some knights. Oh. Knight A2. <laughs> really? Yeah, there was some, uh, uh, you know, the Book computer. B2? Says, yeah, and then Knight B4, and the, the computer assesses it as uh, as equal. Double up? Haven't <laughs> <laughs> you? This seems uh, to have helped your position. On, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can't uh, be Knight A2. Uh, just, just a sec. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check this with the. Uh, this is the engine-free zone. The engine. So I'm, yeah. I'm using my engine here. Knight loves my position, loves me now. Knight b5, still loves me. Uh, rook f8, yeah, still loves me. Not so much after my 26th move, which we're going to come to very shortly. He went rook f8. Uh -huh. And now, after, after much thought, what I, I should do here, apparently, is queen h4, which is like a really primitive looking move you know it could be very effective <laughs> yeah yeah uh instead i played g6 which i thought was a a good idea at the time um i mean what is he actually doing here if we just retract g6 is he doing anything i'm, I'm just thinking of move like rook to d2 improve the position yeah very very possibly or or bishop f1 is he really going to play f6? No. No, I don't think he is. f5? No. I don't think he's going to play f5 either. Uh, Bishop f1, well, Bishop f1 probably discourages f5. Yeah. Bishop will can come out to c4. You might even get two major pieces to the h file in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't sure about g6. I mean, I, I couldn't calculate it all out. So, you know, I, I, I did it anyway. And he took... And I played Queen G4. Was he in time travel at all? He started to drift very short of time, actually. And um, that that influenced me a bit with G6 because I wanted to start to create some some direct threats. Yeah. He, nice played, he played G5 and I played Knight BD4, hitting mm. G6. And when he played Bishop C8... This is when I had my uh, moment of glory with an exchange sack, rook takes c8. Which the computer likes, loves, likes. Yeah, it says rook takes c8. I'm not a computer, I like it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a computer with me. 
and I wasn't in telepathic contact with anybody. So <laughs> this was all my own work. That's incredible. <laughs> that makes it even more admirable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we go. Knight takes E6, and White has got tremendous compensation for the exchange. Uh, rook C5 he played, quite an imaginative defence, uh, forking his own rooks. Nobody ever told him the rooks were five and the knights were three. Um, I don't know. He wanted to put his rook somewhere, and probably C5 seemed, you know, like a good idea at the time. Terribly passive. <laughs> He hasn't done anything. <laughs> well, I, I didn't take either of the rooks, of course, because, you know, oh. he, he's going to have trouble getting them all off prees again. That would be uh, vulgar, vulgar. Yeah. So I went bishop f1. Oh, dear. To bring the bishop to c4. And now when he went rook e8, I took on c5. He took back with a queen. I gave him this check. He was in horrible time trouble now already as well. And then after king f8, I played queen h5 with the old scholar's mate threat on f7, and that was enough to do, encourage him to resign. Well, there's no defence, is there? There's no defence at all. I think you, you could be proud of that game. It's a good game. Yeah, it was all right. That, that was probably my, my best game. You know, in the, it was satisfying to play a game like that. The whole tournament, which probably isn't saying an awful lot. <laughs> but that was the highlight, right? It was good. Yeah. Anyway, the, the the game I'm sure everybody wants to see is my next round game because I was I was up on the demo boards now for the 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 first time, and uh, I yeah, I had to make the, you swoon yeah. swoon. So I I, <clears throat> I was looking at some line. Uh, you playing like, Harry Green, no less. Yeah, yeah. I I did do a bit of preparation in the morning, and I was looking at some line where Black is on the worst side of. Uh, probably slightly the worst side of a draw. And then I thought, no, why should I be playing for a draw against this whippersnapper? Right. <laughs> and having been successful in round two with the Sicilian, my intended move, my intended first move, which was what not a Sicilian, I'm not going to say what it is. Uh, it came out as a Sicilian. So here we go. E4, C5. Well, you mean now, your hand slipped or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I really intended to play a different opening, you know, and then it just came out, you know, Sicilian. So, okay, uh, he went knight f3 and I went e6. He's pretty conscientious with his uh, preparation. Nigel. I know, I know. Well, I hadn't played a Sicilian for a, a little while, so... Uh, but he, he could he could like prepare for the the Sicilian as I played it in uh, uh, 1852. <laughs> I, I mean, I always uh, the, the my favourite Sicilian was the Khan. I uh, think so. I, the um, one of your best friends um, gave him the information before the game. You were going to play the Sicilian. I don't yeah. have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> this can be very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't prepare with anybody, you know. I mean, uh, so, well, I mean, he was probably marginally surprised that I play a Sicilian. I mean, more recently, I played e4, e5. I remember you playing this before. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I was, I did well with a Khan until I stopped doing well with it. Now he went knight c3, and now I went knight c6, which is a Taimanov. And already I was regretting playing a Sicilian at all. Don't let me, <laughs> don't let me keep you up here. <laughs> knight, knight c6. This is the Paulson, isn't it? This is actually the Paulson variation. Well, it's a Taimana of when I play knight g7. Now, now okay, it's a Taimana. Yes. And I, I forgot what I put in my own book. So really what you want to do, if you play this line, rather than have white retreat his knight after knight g7, you need to take it. You've got to take it. And then you need knight to play seven. knight e7. There's no queen b6, is there? Is that the idea? Well, you can play queen b6. You know, I'm going to hoover the queens off. And uh, you don't yeah. feel a little bit cramped. Well, I'll go bishop b7 to d8, bishop c5, bishop b7, you know, <laughs> or b5, and then bishop back to e7. So I should have done it that way. And instead, I played knight g7, and after knight b3, I was so regretting not, you know, playing this. Uh, this in this short time. time and off played this, hasn't he? Knight, didn't he play? Yeah, he, uh, got, he got into all sorts of trouble here. B5 here or something. No, he just got into big trouble. I mean, he played knight g6, I think, in one game. 
and then uh, the the only way to do this with black is to take on d4 um, uh, before playing knight e7. And then you're still basically in a time on of type thing. Right. Now, seeing this, I was so miserable about what I was doing. And I, I thought just all the lines look good for white. Has my move been played before? Anyway, I thought up a new and grisly way to play this for black. You've got to, you've got to forget about this mindset when you go to play these tournaments, you know. <laughs> just 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 play uh just play and don't worry too much. <laughs> the, move, the move you played is a masochist paradise, isn't it? You know, oh yeah, so it's just horrendous. <laughs> but the, the the you know and this uh you know th this is just horrible for black this, probably especially with queen takes d5. Yeah, keep the queens on. Yeah, it should keep the queens on. And, you know, now Black, your age there. You're showing yeah, your Black's age. in a, like, a really miserable endgame. But interestingly enough, I almost fought my way out of it. I went Bishop E6, Bishop B6, uh, still uh, totally disgusting for Black. Bishop E2, now I played Knight E5, repositioned my Knight on D7. Now there we go, still miserable for Black. Bishop here, now my knight hops over to f6 to lend the, the d5 pawn more support. All good stuff. <laughs> knight d4. Great and, knight, knight manoeuvres of our time. Yeah. Uh, bishop c5. Oh, oh. And he went bishop f3. And now I took this off. Brazenly keeping your king in the centre. <laughs> well, now I castle. Right, castle. That spoils the fun. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got the isolated pawn and he's got two bishops. But this, this is more or less the best position I've had since, like, move eight. And don't forget, you haven't got any counterplay at all. This is oh, very uh, <laughs> Counterplay? <laughs> I'm just interested in survival, mate. This is your game plan, you see. You should remember you're a really strong player and come out and smash him up. Or try, to... <laughs> or try and defend some. Time. I mean, the, the point is that a much weaker player with white could, could uh, avoid losing against you play in this position well i'm sure they could you know but i mean, I mean that, it doesn't need to well, work hard to, to make that, it at least you know if i could avoid losing with black here that would be terrific your your d pawn is a goner ah, it's still it's still standing <laughs> <laughs> well here we go put the rooks on the files rook fe8 that's good uh now he goes g4 to uh expose my pawn no no worries h6 h3 i think i was more worried about h4 to be honest because h3 gives me a little bit of breathing room to offer him a pawn up in an opposite colour bishop endgame, which I promptly did with bishop there. Yeah. Right. So if he if he was to take rooks and take this off, I'm and take that, I'll, I'll be able to get my bishop to c6 and rook to e8, and then active counterplay with the rook. Admittedly, a pawn down. No, that looks that looks pretty decent. Yeah, it's the best position I've had for ages in this game. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he went here and I went here. <laughs> and he went A4. I thought he was drifting. Hell of a bishop you've got there. It is. It's <laughs> a really good bishop. So now I went knight here. <laughs> and he went here. And now I went knight G5. Bishop G2. Uh, it was... I don't think it was quite this position, actually. But... I had uh, one stage round here. You could play knight e6, couldn't you, here? Get a playable game. Huh? Um, I did go knight e6. And, I, and my position did inst indeed start to look playable. Yeah. It should be what? Knight, yeah, knight, knight here. Yeah. Right. Playable. Here, here is where I made my big mistake. So I, I saw that I could get counterplay with d4. And I saw uh, quite a lot of what emerges, but I missed a crucial point. Now, if I go rook e7 here, then my position is, uh, I think it's rook e7. Um, yeah, rook e7 is not half bad. And if he takes the pawn? Yeah, he can take the pawn. I will then go. Uh, I will then go. Uh, rook d8, pinning him. I see. That's the cunning plan. This is the cunning plan. 
Right. So that, so yeah. rookie seven is is like almost playable. It's still you know still not what you you would wish for, but it's. Uh, Did he go uh, F four maybe? A uh, five. Yeah, it's not that easy. Yeah, yeah. So I've I've like almost got a playable game, but I I thought I saw counterplay. So what I did, I went here. He took on c6. I took back with a rook. He now took on b7. And I played pawn to d3, which misses something. But, uh, you know, because I, I thought rook takes d3, knight c5. And otherwise, I'm, I'm becoming very active here. C takes d3. I play knight, uh, knight d4. So rook takes d3, knight c5. Okay, so all every single piece is on pre for him. Yeah. What well, did you big, miss? A big problem. That in this position, he would just play this move. Ah, because the vision zoo, rook b8. Yeah, he's check. got rook b8 check, and that's what I missed. Yeah, it's easy to miss. Yeah. And and after, after, after rook takes d3, I'm just completely lost. You know, I could I could resign already, but you know, I I I bumbled on for some moves. That's know. annoying. But, Quite annoying. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the position's completely lost because he's just advancing his queenside pawn team. Yeah. So that was my. Anyway, here we go. You could probably have finished me off more mercifully, to be honest, but uh, resigns. So yeah. that was my round four loss. And it was the last time I got on the demo boards. You, you <laughs> played with a kind of lack of confidence there going into a sharp position. You you, you kind of tried to head for karma waters, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my, my game plan, um, you know, my, my game plan was still sort of a little bit confused at that stage. You know, sort of, uh, it's like the Monty Python sketch where I go into the office, you know, and I, I want to be a lion tamer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by move seven I was having the you know, thoughts about being a banker instead <laughs> can't I do something like banking banking plans good what were your impressions of, of Harry well he's a he's a what very he nice, very very pleasant young man first of all very uh, very personable um, he played with uh, a lot of energy and confidence throughout the, the tournament I thought and then he won critical games you know, he he won a very important game against uh, Danny Gormali, who we're, I think we're going to have on uh, next week, aren't we? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And, uh, you know, then he won the last round in a, a, a very complex game. So Ordinary yeah. game, the last one. Yeah, yeah. And and without that game, he would have been in playoffs and all sorts. So, you know, very a very impressive performance. Mm. And, you know, and, and he also is... Um, He's very well prepared. He's one of the the young players who like prepares everything, and uh, you know that that's a little bit intimidating. As you know that you know somebody from a generation whereby we might take like an informator with us to a tournament. You know we're we're largely improvising and 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 whatever. You know when people have got their openings worked out move by move then you you know you you go in with a certain degree of trepidation you know what has he got in store for me you know what don't i know about and uh you know i'm <clears throat> i have started to gradually address this this issue it's still a work in progress because i haven't done as much as i would like to do um realistically then probably if i keep going with trying to get my chest back on on track then we're probably looking at next year before it, it's starting to look more or less right. I mean, how how's it going with your preparation? Because I know you're going to um, the uh, 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 senior team championships. Well, I mean, I've hardly started. I, I, I've got a very very busy life. I mean, I, I've started work back in schools. I've just finished writing a book. Yeah. Uh, I'm still training um, various various people, various clubs. And I've got two tournaments coming up. I'm running the South of England Junior Tournament 
uh, which takes a fair bit of running. And then the girls' ECF girls' tournament the next week. So all these things, you know, impact on your time. Well, that's right. But I will have time to do a few weeks' work beforehand, and I, 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 I I'm still playing quite a bit uh, on the on the internet. So I think I'll be all right. Yeah, good, good stuff. Yeah. And over sixty five, as you kind of say. I mean, it, okay, I'm not saying it's going to be easy or anything like it, but uh, it's it's much easier than playing kids all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, I think with the older players, then then very often they haven't fully embraced the computer preparation and and you know sort of. Well, it's just absolutely and, knackering, isn't it? It's knackering playing preparing with the computer all the time. Yeah, yeah, we, and we not, it's it's tedious. It's very tedious as well. Yeah, yeah, very, really tedious. And you know, it's it's not something that. Um, well, I I was even never particularly good at conventional preparation. You know, I was never in the sort of, uh, you know, John Nunn, Murray Chandler uh, bracket, you know, because they, they would prepare uh, analysing together and they would prepare sharp lines. Uh, they, that was enough. You know, they, they also were, were too much for me, to be honest. Did you see that interview with Neiman uh, from the Sinkfield Cup where he basically, uh, the, the last one, where he said that he was, you know, preparing for 12 hours a day. Uh, and chess meant everything to him. He, he sat in the hotel preparing for two years and never went out of his room only to eat and stuff like that. I mean, if that is the way, if that is what it takes to become a <laughs> class player replay, then forget it. You know, I would I would advise him to go out and get a life, uh, <laughs> go into banking, or what? Well, uh, God knows, but don't, don't spend your life doing that. Uh, <laughs> No, maybe I've got a completely the wrong approach. Uh, well, we, 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 it's just a different generation because our expectations were not that we would have to be working 12 hours a day on, on studying theory, you know, but it, it does seem studying like... Chess, studying yeah. chess. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the final game, I'll show you the final game. Yeah, so go for it. I, uh, I thought this, this young man was also very, very good. Um, and he won the... I, I think he won some of the junior titles and also finished very strongly, but he was only, he, he was rated under 2300. Mm. Uh, forget where it was um, exactly. Uh, hang on. How, how old is he now? Well, he seems very young, but he's, um, right. He is, uh, he was rated 2194 which was like super bad value as an ELO rating because <laughs> he was very, very good. Right. And, and you'll see, I, I had to play. This was actually one of my best games. That's why I put it in. But I, I scraped to draw. Yeah. So D4, E6, meaning that I was, I was more than happy to go into the Franco-Indian with uh, D4, C5. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> not to mention 2a6 <laughs> not to mention 2a6 or 2b6 yeah. well you're giving away too much of your repertoire yeah i know i know I, I, it's a it's a real giveaway as as regards to my uh uh opening preparation so here i went bishop b4 check bishop d2 That's a Caesar check gives a check yeah lopped off the bishop queen takes and bishop takes d2 check is probably also a move that betrays a certain trepidation let's say you know, and you uh, F5 now. F5. Come F5 on. is quite a good move. Right. And um, also B6 is not a bad move. Is that right? Yeah. Not F6? How do we rate that? Six. I decided to play the... Oh, my God. Jeffrey, play like all medicine. Jeffrey Boycott style. <laughs> <laughs> E3, Bishop F5. Here we go. Right. Bishop D3 takes, Queen takes. C6. But I mean, this is this is one way of of not going into the teeth of somebody's opening preparation, you know. This uh, day, spectators filtered quietly out of the building. <laughs> 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 well, they they you know they were all watching. Uh, well, they were watching the top boards. I wasn't on the top boards here. I don't know if any commentators eventually turned to my game. Anyway, he's playing for the the F three and E four plan. So I castled, castled, knight B, D7. And he goes knight G3. And uh, so he's looking to play F3 and E4. And, and a, a logical plan against this is to go C5. So I, I didn't want those 
pawns to go too far. I went rook c8, f3, and now c5. Mm -hmm. And he goes rook a d1. Uh, now, you, you can afford the isolated pawn more because e3 is also a weakness. And um, right, so now I took on d4. He took the queen. I went knight b6. So you can see that, you know, I become very, <laughs> very fond of these isolated d pawns. <laughs> you know, it's more a case, you know, I'll give you an isolated. You can torture me. Just don't checkmate me in 25 moves, please. Not much chance of that here. <laughs> no, knight f5. Right, and now I played rook c4. And he goes queen e5, and I go rook e8. And he okay. goes queen g3. Now, there was a little uh, <clears throat> tactical point somewhere around here. Um, he's threatening mate. I know, he's threatening that's, mate. That's I, the I, minor I, tactical detail. I did spot that, actually. Yeah, so I go g6. Now, if he goes knight d6, I had laid the cunning plan that I'm going to play knight h5. All too much. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was probably a bit much that I was expecting him to, to fall into this. But, um, well, he didn't, of course. So here he played queen g5. And now I sank into thought because I didn't see a good move. <laughs> <laughs> uh he's he's threatening all sorts of things like e4 or uh, you know yeah anyway eventually i found <laughs> rook c8 <laughs> <laughs> it's uh right and it this looks is rook c8 the uh the only move we got into the computer now it says rook c7 is not bad also king h8 doesn't like my what's his threat has he got a threat well he plays um uh, the rook c8 he plays e4 which the the computer also likes mm. and then it says that i found the only move in knight c4 right and now apparently the most testing move is h4 Yeah, h4 is the most dangerous move. Okay, leaving b2 to be taken. Leaving b2 to be taken. Okay, well, if I take it? So, uh, knight takes b2. h4, knight takes b2. Yeah, his knight's attacked as well. Yeah, you go knight takes d5, takes okay. knight h6 yeah. check. Yeah, okay. King f8, rook takes d5. And if king g7? I think the uh, so King G seven, then so bad. I'm not sure it's so bad. I'm gonna chop the queens off. Uh, hang on, I check. King G seven. He still goes rook takes D five. So it's yeah. after either. Yeah, I mean, I, I can try and try and play this. Well, but your knight on uh, your knight on b two is is doing a good job. Yeah, you've got to play. Uh, I don't know, rookie seven maybe. Rook, rook d eight. Uh, rookie seven, rook d eight. Yeah, may, maybe. Well, probably that. Probably the king side's a bit mangy for black. I, I should be able to draw that though. I guess I should be able to draw that. Hmm. But anyway, he played rook f2. Whereupon, I now played knight takes e4. Did he miss that? Um, no, it's not, it's not even the best move. The best move is king h8, which I didn't consider at all. Really? Yeah. Just threatening the knight. <laughs> yeah. And then, then we're likely to get a, a draw with knight h6. I think you've got to think very carefully about this position with black. You can't, I mean, I've come into this for the first time. I, I'm finding it difficult to find the right move right away. 
Oh, there, there were loads of ways to lose. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that, that was the, um, you know, that that was the the awkward thing. I mean, and you know, I felt under pressure all the way through. Oh, definitely. You know, the Queen and Knight there are really, yeah, you know, intimidating. Yeah. So, so he went was... now. He went Queen H six. Yeah. And I I need to take his knight. Yes. And then he took my knight. And so we've got the, the, the king standing here with the wind in his hair. <laughs> You've got rookie six, do not you? You've got rookie six. Uh, no, I played queen b6. I wanted to get Some the queen. Sort of third rank. Yeah, queen b6. I, I, I pinned his rook as well. Yeah. You know, to, to further encourage some trades. And then he went queen h4. And I went knight e3. To attack the other rook and threaten knight g4. So at this stage, I'd, I'd, I'd managed to worry him enough that he was willing to give me a draw. <laughs> we gave check, king here, and I went knight a4. So now I went queen b4. Okay, that gives that allows him to take the draw, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But of course, your knight's on pre. My knight's on pre. Well, it, you know, this does seem now to be, um, you know, a draw is a reasonable result already here. Yeah. But but that was, you know, that was a nerve-wracking game, you know, because he he was very close to, to winning against me. Did very well in the tournament. Again, uh, you know, I think, uh, as with Harry Greave, a very underrated player. What was your final score again? Uh, five and a half plus two. Five and a half out of nine. One loss, yeah, one loss, three, uh, three wins, um, five draws. So pretty solid. Yeah, it was it, it was pretty solid, and as you can see, the the you know the, there are a few things that are like obviously wrong that I uh, you know that that I can put right. So I'm 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 reasonably hopeful that I, you know I will be able to conduct some some renovations. <laughs> and it, and it won't be you know it won't be too bad but you know by the time I'm done. So where but where I, are the next where are the next tournaments? What's coming up? There's a, an open in Slovenia and an open in Egypt by the beach. Right, right and I, I should get a chance to see the the pyramids and stuff. Hopefully, you're getting Egypt. some uh, some conditions. Yeah, yeah, they, you know they, they you know they're giving me the hotel and stuff. So oh, uh, nice. yeah, so. Yeah, it, it's. It, I've not been to either country before. Not been to Slovenia or Egypt before, so it's uh, you know two new two new places. So it, it yeah, I mean you know, it, um, I, I think it'll be quite a lot of fun. And you know, if I can you know complete the renovations on my game and play reasonably reasonably well. You know, defend those isolated deep horns a little bit better. <laughs> I'm sure this this type of uh, self improvement process uh, uh, at an advanced age is is of interest to everybody, really, because it's quite uh, not that quite advanced, advanced, Mister. <laughs> well, okay, uh, semi advanced age, <laughs> middle age, middle age. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see, you know, how, how what strain it puts upon you. Yeah, well, it, it a lot of it. I mean, as you can see, there there was a, a certain lack of confidence at times, especially with regard to the opening choices. Yeah, and um, you know that's something I can certainly put right. Uh, but I want to put it right without becoming too embroiled in um, uh, in, in theoretical discussions. You know, I don't I don't want to you know to have to to study opening theory. You know, like you, I've got too many other things I want to do with my time. So so that is one factor. And I, I am gradually coming to terms with it, you know, and uh, have a few uh, openings that I, I wish to play and wish to play well, but won't place undue demands on, uh, on my time. And then I think you have to keep playing once you, you know, if you once you start this process and start to get the rust off, then you don't want to have to go through it again. So, uh, you know, like uh, the uh, the interview with Nigel Pover earlier, then he, he plans to play four main tournaments a year and for the club and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a good 
you know, rate of playing in events because then you're able to keep the rust off. And, um, you know, if you keep your game in reasonable shape, there's no, there's no reason, um, you know, why, uh, you know, we, 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 we should be complete rubbish. I mean, one obvious uh, drawback is, of course, money. You know, you don't necessarily earn a lot of money trampling around the circuit. Yeah, yeah, we've got to use Ryanair. <laughs> you need. I've, I've invested in Precisely. Ryanair size luggage. Precisely. Yeah, you know. So there's like, uh, you know, they they still charge, but if you don't have very big luggage, and you get the under seat bag for free, and you you know you learn to travel light, then that is a distinct advantage. I mean, uh, you you hear this uh, you hear this stuff. You know that the greatest benefit of playing chess is you're the master of your own time. But, um, you know, that's perfectly true. But you have to accept that this might result in financial hardship. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, yeah, so, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is, um, you know, is, is basically online and, and Tiger Chess related. And, yeah. you know, I'm planning to continue that. I'm not uh, physically teaching that many people. If I do it, I do it online. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's going to be too badly affected by uh, by me going off to, to play in tournaments. And I can, as long as there's a good internet connection, I can stay in contact with my my members and uh, and students even when at uh, when I'm at tournaments. So I, I, I don't see it as a you know a big uh, uh, a big problem. The um, the other the other problem is that uh, I'm in a table tennis team now, and they they they're short of players. That's not you know, a problem. That's good. So other interests. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and and so now they um, uh, they 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 were just checking uh, whether or not I've got any more of these trips coming up because they need me for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Division three hundred of the St Helens. <laughs> I know the same from cricket of the, of the Wigan League. <laughs> Lowest league against the oldest. <laughs> yeah, division, it's division three. I'm in the bottom division, you know. But I'm, um, I have been getting some, you know, some some tips from uh, Martin Brown, who you you may know. F. Yeah, I saw your photos on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Even so, you don't want to be in Division One. I, I feel I feel the same with cricket. You know, <laughs> occasionally you come up against really young, strong players, and you know, with yeah. the ball flying around your head, you really don't want to be there. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting up to Division Two. You know that that would be you know that that would be quite a at least if the table tennis ball hits you in the head nothing happens if the cricket <laughs> ball hits you in the head <laughs> well there is that it's true <laughs> yeah. some damage may be caused <laughs> all right well that's fantastic and and those games are really uh, interesting and it'll be interesting to see chart your course over the next uh, few months yeah well thanks very much for uh, inviting me onto the show Andrew <laughs> well that's that's a pleasure okay. anyway that's it guys and thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you. Bye. Cheers.